Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I want to talk about how you can customize the legend in your heat map if you're using a complex heat map package to plot heat map in R. So uh, heat map is incredibly useful in bioinformatics and if you have missed the last video about how you can plot a heat map using the heat complex heat map package in R, please I'll put a video description up here and you can watch that and then you can come back to this. So today I just want to talk about how you can customize the legend. For example, how can you make it bigger, smaller, in different colors, uh, if you want to plot it based on the continuous data or discrete data or you want to plot, put it like different location around your heat map. So this video will try to go through all of that. So first chunk is, again, it's just cosmetic options. And for those that doesn't know, uh, you can actually download the script on the video description. It will bring you to my GitHub repo and you can actually download the code called Complex Heat Map Part 1.5 Legend. Again, I do not write uh, most of the code. The code actually written by the author. And you can also find the link to the author's book. Uh, in the video description down below. It's an excellent walkthrough of the whole package and you can actually have a lot more details on the package in the website that I link down there. Okay, so once you download, for those that have not installed complex heat map in the R environment, you can uncomment line 16 and that will install complex heat map into your R studio. But once you have start the once you have done the installation for the first time, you don't have to do it any time. That's why I put in the comments over here so that every time you run chunk two, you actually include all the library. Just to make sure you also install other package like Circleize, Grid, and ggplot2, just to make sure everything works properly. Okay, so the, the next two is to of course uh, create a matrix to be run. So this just generate a matrix of a hundred randomly generated number in the 10 to 10 grid, nothing fancy. And the next one is actually to create a single legend object. So it is possible to create a legend object outside of the heat map as using the legend function over there. And you actually specify the legend using a color functions here using color ram2. So color ram2 is more like an interpolation of color between blue, white, and red over here. And you add the point of 0, 0 0.5, and 1. And using the combination of the color functions as well as a legend function, you can actually create an object called LGD, which is actually a legend itself without the heat map. Okay, and then you can use the draw function over here to actually draw out that singular object um, inside a canvas without the, independent of the heat map. It's not very important now, but when you are dealing with later, when we've done more annotations and more complex combination of heat map, this might be useful. So keep that in mind. So there's also things like x equals to 0 0.9 and y equals to 0 0.5. So this is just the relative position of the legend onto the empty canvas over here. 0 0.9 is 90% on the right, or 50% is 50% of the y axis. And the overall grid layout is one to two, which is the expect ratio of the, of the canvas that you see here. But it's not particularly useful, right? If you just have a single legend to show people, so usually we'll actually have the heat map in correlation of, sorry, we have the legend correlated to the direct heat map. So which is what we do here. So similar to the last video last time, to draw a heat map using a complex heat map package, you just do heat map and you put in your data just to make sure that your heat map is capital letter because the lowercase heat map is actually belongs to another function. I believe this is actually in base R or some other function, some other packages, but uh, the way that the accept argument is different and they are not intercompatible. Okay, just to make sure that happens. That, just to make sure you are aware that always put a capital here because I did that and half an hour and it doesn't work and I have no idea. So once you run line 40, because you are assigning to an object called HT1, it will not actually print out the heat map. So how can we do that? Is that we can again use the draw functions to draw the heat map one together with the legend that we have assigned above. So in this case, it will be legend, sorry, heat map legend list equals to the list of LGD. And that will actually print out the original uh, heat map over here called matrix 14, as well as another one that we have newly, we have freshly assigned up there. So, which is zero to one. So the original heat map over here is not gonna be the same as the, the value of the original heat map is gonna be independent of the legend that we have assigned. So just, just understand that there are two different objects.
So for the, for the rest of the video, I'm going to talk about the legend that is in combination of the heat map function because I don't find it particularly useful to, to talk about them separately. So how we're going to do that is that instead of doing a separate object and then fitting that in with a draw function, I'm going to fit the heat map parameters directly into the heat map function. In this case, you can see that uh, heat map dot map sorry heat map bracket mat that draws the heat map. And how do you customize a legend is to use an argument called heat map legend parameters, where that is equals to a list where you can fit in the title, fit in the ad, and fit in the label. So you can see that the resulting uh, outcome of this code is that now you have a, a legend which has a title, it has a negative two to positive two at, a, at that label, and then that three breaks that you had assigned minus 2, 0, and 2 is now being labeled as positive 2, 0, and negative 2, respectively. And you can reverse the order of that positive, negative, and breaks to see what happens. So we can actually have a very customizable uh, label to that. So how I usually want to actually do my heat map customization is not to have a really long heat map code, but I actually take that list and then put it outside. So that when I run the heat map code over here at line 66, uh, it's a lot easier to see. So I, what I do over here is just to take that heat map, the list that is specified just now, I just take it out of the original heat map uh, bracket to assign as a different object called LGD list and then pipe the list into the heat map functions. So I purposely also changed the color over here, as you can see, so that there, there's a difference between the two. So when it's 0, 01 and 0, 02, of course, the label is supposed to change, but you see the color are slightly lighter because the, the color definition is slightly different between the two. So the next one is uh, how do we change the color of a legend? Uh, we don't because the color of the legend is supposed to be correlated to directly to the heat map body. You can actually change the customers of the, the color of the individual uh, legend using the code 20, uh, 28 to 31 over there, but I, I don't find it particularly useful. And if I want to customize the color of a legend, I will, I will do it directly on the annotation level or I'll do it directly on the heat map level. So in this case, we are using again, a color ram2 functions to define a blue, yellow, red uh, object, sorry, blue, yellow, red color functions. And then we pipe it directly into our heat map, as you can see color equals to color functions, and we're maintaining the same parameters. So that again, we have a title, we have a bricks, and we have a label. But now instead of the blue, red, white situation, it's now blue, red, yellow situations. And uh, I, look, I, I just feel like it looks a bit more fancy and maybe it will catch the eye a little bit more since I'm, you know, I'm, I'm against you on YouTube and stuff. So, um, in, so beside actually just changing the color, which is not very useful in terms of building a legend. Uh, you can also change the size of the legend, particularly if you have a lot of different breaks and you don't want it to be uh, squeezed all together, you wanna extend the length, you can just use length, uh, legend length equals to unit 6cm, fairly straightforward. You can also change the horizontal length, which is called the grid weight. And you can see that uh, the heat map now, instead of the really small 1cm, has now grown into a 4cm a very fat heat map. And sometimes you might want to do that just to highlight a certain thing in, the, in your heat map. Or, you know, you have many different colors and breaks that you just want to show clearly. You can also do that. So we can also change the position of the title. So you can see that the, the title here called FOO, originally on the loft left, top left corner, we have changed it also to the left center corner so that it's, uh, it, it might be important when you have multiple heat map, sorry, multiple legends stacked left and right and top and bottom of each other. Where you put it on the left center, it might look better. You can also change it to the top right, top left, uh, top centers and try to see what happens. So there are also certain times where instead of actually doing it uh, a heat map vertically, you want to flip the heat map on the horizontal axis. So in this case, it's also straightforward, just change the direction to horizontal, but just beware that the legend height and the grid width might not work properly when you are running things as a, as a horizontal. And sometimes the title position, uh, certain title position are also not allowed when you are running your, um, 
legend as a horizontal, for example. Okay, so you can see that it's now horizontal. Um, so instead of doing just on continuous numerical value, it is possible sometimes to create a matrix or a heat map with discrete value, whether it is a binary data or something like on coprint, where you have different time mutation between different genes. Uh, the complex heat map would also be able to, to put the legend properly. So for example, in this case, I have just changed the ad, changed the label, changed the, the, and the title position so that you can see that it's a matrix of January to June because it's an easier representation of categorical data, but uh, the heat map has to be slightly readjust so that it looks uh, nicer and you're able to read all of them one by one. So yeah, so this cast the last two um, customization in the video. So the, the location of the legend might not be as important most of the time when you're publishing papers, but when you have multiple heat map in combination with one another, you might want to put, for example, the legend of the annotation on the left, but the annotation of the heat map on the right. So just to make sure that you you know how to do that, um, because it's slightly more complicated than piping it in the list. So what you need to do is create your legend, sorry, your legend list as in just now. But instead of actually just specify the title of the legend, the the location of the legend have to actually be uh, indicated in a draw command because they're drawn separately. So what they do is that they take the heat map, they take the object, and they put it in the separate location. So the only with the draw function are you able to change the location of the heat map. Either it's a left, right, top, and bottom, and, and so on. So for discrete heat map, again, it will be slightly more complicated to do a horizontal versions and I have actually find a stack overflow tracks that you can look into if you were to actually do a, a horizontal stacking of the legend for your either annotation or heat map. So that's all I want to say about uh, the legend today. Remember, the color follows the original heat map body. It is likely that you can actually specify uh, a legend object, but it's usually more convenient that you just directly pipe it into the heat map. And if you want to change the location of the legend on your plot, you have to use the draw function because the heat map um, function itself might not be able to do so, at least in this package at least at the current moment of time when I'm trying to make this video. So thanks for watching. For now, I hope you learned something about heat map and we'll see you next time. Bye.